there is something about sacred artifacts that are so interesting. These types of things permeate pop culture and become the focal points of many of the most popular books and movies that we have. Whether it be swords, stones, records, or other items, artifacts capture our collective imaginations, often due to their rarity, magical properties, or the special ways or circumstances that they were created or used. Movie plots that utilize actual historical sacred artifacts are among my personal favorites. Sacred artifacts are real, and we have accounts of them throughout Scripture. And among them, no sacred artifact shows up across more books of Scripture, across more geographies, and passes through more hands of more people throughout all of time than the Urim and Thummim. Traditionally, Urim and Thummim means lights and perfections, and are instruments of revelation. Each word is a plural that always appears in Scripture referencing the instrument and is left untranslated in our Scriptures when mentioned in the plural. The singular of Urim is Ur and describes the light or flame of a fire. The singular of Thummim is Tom and includes the concepts of perfection, completeness, or fulfillment. It is, in short, a stone of truth. Alternate translations for this phrase include revelation and truth and light and truth. Biblical scholars have struggled with understanding the Urim and Thummim because the Bible contains no description of their usage or even a description of the object itself. They have come to the consensus that it was likely a binary lot system to give a yes or no answer to the high priest of the temple. With two words, Urim and Thummim, and both being plural, have made scholars feel that there were two objects. And then, in conjunction with the breastplate of judgment, which I discussed in another video, which had the other precious and semi-precious stones in it, leads scholars to believe the Urim and Thummim were stones. The free gospel learning app can be used to search on any subject in the gospel, and you will get a video from the best teacher on that subject explaining it. The app is a brand new resource for members of the church to use to better learn and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ, and I hope you will download and use it. Remember, the Urim and Thummim were stored in the breastplate of judgment, and the entire breastplate, ephod, and Urim and Thummim were used to receive revelation. This understanding doesn't come from the Bible, but rather Jewish traditions from Josephus and the Targum. But additional scripture and revelation through Joseph Smith has dramatically widened our understanding of this sacred artifact. If we are to look at this chronologically, it is the brother of Jared that was first given the Urim and Thummim, although we don't learn about it from the Book of Ether. We learn about it in the Doctrine and Covenants, where the Lord talks about many of the sacred artifacts, including, Behold, I say unto you, that ye must rely upon my word, which if you do, with full purpose and heart, ye shall have a view of the plates, and also of the breastplate, the sword of Laban, the Urim and Thummim, which were given to the brother of Jared upon the mount, when he talked with the Lord face to face and the miraculous directors which were given to Lehi while at the wilderness on the borders of the Red Sea. Again, chronologically, it was Abraham who had a Urim and Thummim next, as the Lord taught Abraham astronomy, calendaring, and time. In Abraham 3.1, it says, And I, Abraham, had the Urim and Thummim, which the Lord my God had given unto me. And the Lord said unto me by the Urim and Thummim that Kolob was after the manner of the Lord, according to its times and seasons in the revolutions thereof, that one revolution was a day unto the Lord after his manner of reckoning, it being one thousand years according to the time appointed unto that whereupon thou standest. Next is Moses and Aaron having a Urim and Thummim. While there is very specific instructions on how to create the high priest's clothing, ephod, and breastplate of judgment, there are no instructions about the Urim and Thummim, only that the breastplate was to hold the Urim and Thummim. Exodus 28.30 reads, And thou shalt put in the breastplate of judgment the Urim and Thummim, and they shall be upon Aaron's heart, when he goeth in before the Lord. And Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel upon his heart before the Lord continually. This would indicate that the Urim and Thummim already existed and were given to Moses. Next chronologically is in the Americas with Mosiah, the father of King Benjamin. Here we take a little creative license because the Urim and Thummim are not mentioned by name, but Mosiah has the power to interpret the language of the Jaredites, quote, by the gift and power of God, which is the same description used by Joseph Smith. Mosiah II, his grandson, 
has the same gift to translate and specifically states he used, quote, interpreters, which is the same term Oliver Cowdery says Joseph Smith used. So it is likely that both Mosiahs used the Urim and Thummim for translation. Mosiah 28.13 even says, And now he translated them by the means of those two stones which were fastened into the two rims of a bow. Alma the Younger and his son Helaman appear to both have the Urim and Thummim. Alma speaks of a stone that shines forth in darkness unto light in Alma 37.23, which he calls interpreters, as he is passing them on to Helaman. It would appear that these Nephite interpreters were handed down to Moroni, which he buries. Ether 4 verse 5 says, Wherefore the Lord hath commanded me to write them, and I have written them, and he commanded me that I should seal them up. And he also hath commanded me that I should seal up the interpreters thereof, wherefore I have sealed up the interpreters according to the commandment of the Lord. Joseph Smith later unearths them and finds that they are the same ones Mosiah had, but now it has been fastened to a breastplate. Joseph Smith History 1 verse 35 says, Also that there were two stones in silver bows, and these stones fastened to a breastplate, constituted what is called the Urim and Thummim, deposited with the plates, and use of these stones were what constituted seers in ancient or former times, and that God had prepared them for the purpose of translating the book. Joseph Smith's mother described them as two smooth three-cornered diamonds set in glass, and the glasses were set in silver bows, connected with each other in much the same way that old-fashioned spectacles are made. Based on the description by Joseph Smith's mother, some have theorized meanings behind the symbols, but this is speculation, but certainly interesting to think about. In my video on Joseph Smith's seer stone, you learned that the Urim and Thummim were used to translate the first 116 pages of the Book of Mormon that were lost by Martin Harris. The angel Moroni collected the plates and the Urim and Thummim at that time, and then later returned the plates, but no mention is made of the Urim and Thummim being returned. It seems that maybe they weren't returned to Joseph Smith, and he used the other seer stone to complete the translation of the Book of Mormon. The easiest way to find that video is by using the free Gospel Learning app, but all of this does beg the question of how many Urim and Thummims are there? While no one knows the answer to this question, there are several theories. The first is that each time someone needed a Urim and Thummim, the Lord delivered it to them. Some also look at this as a dispensational theory, in that each dispensation had its own Urim and Thummim. Under this theory, it could be the same Urim and Thummim or any number of different ones. They could have been delivered and recovered by angels or delivered and lost time. Another theory states that there is a single Urim and Thummim that is passed around throughout time, sometimes in a patriarchal lineage and sometimes through angelic deliveries. In this theory, the single Urim and Thummim could have followed this path throughout time. The brother of Jared was the first to get one that we know, which was shortly after the time of the Tower of Babel. It would have been collected by an angel either before they left for the Promised Land or sometime after even possibly through a descendant of the brother of Jared. Either way, Abraham ends up with it. He says the Lord gave him the Urim and Thummim, but that could be through an angel or through the priesthood line. It seems most likely that he would have gotten it about the time he left with the records of the patriarchs as recorded in Abraham 2 verses 31. It could have been passed down from generation to generation to Moses and Aaron, although one has to ask who Moses would have gotten it from. Perhaps Jethro, his father-in-law, who was not part of the house of Israel, but did have the priesthood. Jethro was a descendant of Abraham. Or could it have been through some other person within the house of Israel, meaning the Urim and Thummim was passed down through Isaac, Jacob, Joseph for another 400 plus years until Moses arrives on the scene. It could have been collected by an angel from Abraham and then later given to Moses as well. However, Deuteronomy 33.8 states that the Urim and Thummim should be handed down from high priest to high priest through the generations. So perhaps that is how it was received by Moses. It was stored in the breastplate of judgment and taken through the wilderness to Jerusalem and remained there until the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians in 586 B.C. As you will recall, Lehi and his family left about 13 years before this, but the Mulekites leave after the destruction of Jerusalem. The leader of the Mulekites was Mulek, the only surviving son of Zedekiah, the last king of Judah after the Babylonian conquest. 
he could have had the Urim and Thummim and taken it to the promised land, where it could have been given to Mosiah the first when they appointed him king. The Urim and Thummim are then passed down through King Benjamin, Mosiah the second, through Alma's line down to Mormon and to Moroni, who buries them with the gold plates. Then, 1400 plus years later, after passing through the global apostasy, and as an angelic being, Moroni directs Joseph Smith to the place where they were buried, who uses them in the translation of the first portion of the Book of Mormon, before being returned to Moroni. The third theory states that there are two Urim and Thummims that are referred to as continental Urim and Thummims. In this theory, the brother of Jared is given one which he takes to the promised land, and Abraham is given a different Urim and Thummim. Abraham's Urim and Thummim gets passed down to Moses, Aaron, and through the Old Testament until it is lost sometime during or after the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem. The brother of Jared's Urim and Thummim are passed down through the generations until their destruction as a nation, when it is discovered alongside Coriantumr's stone by Mosiah I. It is passed through the generations to Moroni, who buries it later to be found by Joseph Smith. You can decide for yourself which theory you believe and how many Urim and Thummims there are. What we haven't spoken about in this video is how the Urim and Thummim were used. I go into this in more detail in my other video on the Joseph Smith Seer Stone. Human imagination seems to immediately associate the Urim and Thummim and their design to something that would be looked through, like glasses, and as you peer at the ancient writings, you will see the translation in your own language. It would seem from what we know about the translation process with Joseph Smith that this wasn't exactly the case. It probably doesn't help that much of the artwork we saw early in our life helped lead us to this conclusion. In fact, Joseph looked at the seer stone whereupon the words would appear while the gold plates lay nearby, usually wrapped in a cloth napkin. Some might say that the plates weren't needed at all, although I would disagree. It seems that the object for the translation did need to be nearby, although not required to look at. I mean, what good would it have done for Joseph Smith to look at them? He can't read Reformed Egyptian. Isaiah told us exactly how Joseph would be able to read the plates as seen in 2 Nephi 27 verse 20, which says, Then shall the Lord God say unto him, The learned shall not read them, for they have rejected them and I am able to do mine own work. Wherefore, thou shalt read the words which I shall give unto thee. If you are interested in how the ancient high priest in the tabernacle, and later in the temple in Jerusalem, used the Urim and Thummim specifically to receive revelation, I would encourage you to watch my video on the breastplate of judgment, where I go into that in a lot of detail. Now stop and think about why the Urim and Thummim is given. In fact, Mosiah 28, 13 through 16 tells us, it says, And now he translated them by the means of those two stones which were fastened into the rim of a bow. Now these things were prepared from the beginning and were handed down from generation to generation for the purpose of interpreting languages. And they have been kept and preserved by the hand of the Lord, that he should discover to every creature who should possess the land, the iniquities and abominations of his people, and whosoever has these things is called seer, after the manner of old times. So the express purpose of the Urim and Thummim is to translate records as a warning to the current covenant people on the promised land of the fall of the previous covenant people. I think it also goes without saying that the Lord loves us so much, he goes to great lengths to ensure this warning is given to everyone. In my mind, this goes back to why Urim and Thummim are translated lights and perfections. Light, glory, gospel, perfections, completeness, and truth. The gospel truth is what is provided through the Urim and Thummim. No wonder Joseph Smith said the Book of Mormon is the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion, and a man could get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than by any other book. While it would be super cool to have a Urim and Thummim, we don't need one right now because those warnings, truths, and light are found in our scriptures, especially the Book of Mormon, which is one main reason it is the keystone of our religion. This is why it is so important that we study and apply the teachings of the Book of Mormon to our lives. And if you really want your own Urim and Thummim, if you are true and faithful, according to Doctrine and Covenants 130, those that are exalted in the celestial kingdom will receive a white stone, which is probably your own personal Urim and Thummim. Additionally, those that inherit the celestial kingdom will live on a great Urim and Thummim. 
as the celestial earth will become such. If you find these types of topics interesting, let me know in the comments and include your thoughts on if there are dispensational Urim and Thummims, continental Urim and Thummims, or a single Urim and Thummim that is passed down through time. One last thing. This video is being released one week before the October 2022 General Conference. As we prepare to hear from the Prophet and Apostles, I would encourage you to listen to their previous talks. In the new Gospel Learning app, we built a learning track that has all the videos for each time the Prophet has spoken since he became Prophet. While there are many great ways to prepare for General Conference, it would seem to me like that is a really good one, and the free Gospel Learning app with this learning track makes it easy putting all of those talks in the order that the Prophet gave them. I put the link to the Gospel Learning app in the description below to make it easier for you to download and use. Thanks for watching.